Welcome again guys. In this video tutorial we will be talking about plasma cells. Uh, I have done many videos about immunology and different cells like B cells, T cells and how they interact with each other. Now plasma cells uh, is among that part mainly but we will be talking about especially the important properties of plasma cells that make it different, little bit different. Now first things first, the plasma cell, whatever thing we know as plasma cell, there are many other names also. For example, uh, it is also known as plasmocyte. So plasma cells are also known as plasmocytes. They are also known as the effector, effector B cells, because they are actually B lymphocyte cells. They are actually B lymphocyte cells because if you know inside our body. There are two different types of cells. There are B lymphocyte cells and T lymphocyte cells, and the lymphatic cells. Now, T lymphocyte cells are more important in case of the cellular mediated immunity or cellular mode of immunity. B lymphocytic cells are important for cellular immunity, a little bit more, more for the humoral mode of immunity, that is the antibody mediated immunity. Now, that's the exact purpose for plasma cells also. Because normally this, these cells actually produced in bone marrow, like any other immune cells, they are produced in bone marrow. And once produced in bone marrow, they are taken into the bloodstream. Now what they do here in the bloodstream, they, they are circulating in the blood, they are called as the B cells. Remember, they are called as the B cells or effector B cells. Now once these B cells are there, they are, they are uh, I mean, wandering around the bloodstream and finally reach the tissue where the infection strikes place. In the, in the tissue what happens, these B cells are sitting and these B cells are sitting mainly in the lymphatic organs, the secondary lymphatic organ. For example, the spleen or any other uh, lymphatic uh, organ, small lymphatic organs that are present in our body. So, spleen is one of the examples. So this is the secondary lymphatic organ. In this lymphatic organ, this, this B effector cells are there. They're sitting there. And once these B lymphocyte cells are sitting in the spleen or any other secondary lymphatic, uh, lymphatic organ, now what happens here, if there is any infection, infection means either invasion of a bacteria or virus or viral particle. Whatever particle it is, it is a foreign particle, right? Non-self particle. So that foreign particle acts as an antigen, obviously. So that antigen is there in this secondary lymphatic organ, secondary lymphatic tissue. And the secondary lymphatic tissue, they have special regions called follicle. And in that follicle, these B cells are there and these B cells are ready because these B cells is, are also having an important receptor on their surface. Right? There are so many different receptors are present, but one of these receptors they are called as MHC class 2 molecule, major histocompatibility complex 2. Now, with the help of this major histocompatibility complex 2 receptor, this B lymphocyte cell can actually bind with this antigen here. Let's say this is the antigen, it can bind with it. It can internalize this antigen, chop it inside the cell, and then represent it outside. So it can represent that another let's say this is the NHC structure. With the help of this NHC2, it can represent the fragment of that antigen outside in the follicle region. So once it is sitting there doing its job, in that condition, T cells come in. Now the T cell that we are talking about here, the T cell is having different receptor molecules onto the surface. And this T cell we talked about, it is called CD4 T cells. So these are the CD4 T cells. They are also called as the T helper cell or TH cell. Now this T helper cell detects this antigen present and, and presented by the T cell and finally provides some of the important chemical agents. One of these agents is IFN gamma or interferon gamma. So one of these examples. Well, there are many different kinds of cytokines that are present the, the chemical signaling molecules. So those signaling molecules will tell this B cell to grow 
and differentiate. Now this B cell provides and this B cell is matured afterwards. And this B cell is now under the control of vigorous change and maturation, differentiation. And finally, this B cell gives rise to what we call either two of the cells. One is called plasma cell that we are talking today. Or it can also produce memory cell. Both of them are the extended part of the B cell. Now, once this B cell is receiving the signal from the CD4 T cell, that yes, this is the correct antigen. Now, once receiving the signal in the form of interferon gamma, this B cell will start producing a lot of other molecules, protein molecules mainly. Those molecules will interact with this antigen. And either they can neutralize that antigen or they can destroy that antigen. That is the job of the cell. So B cell produces that important molecule and that is called as antibody. So B cell turned into antibody secreting cell. And that is called the plasma cell. So plasma cell is, is further modified form of B cell that produces a lot of antibody, different types of antibody with response to different types of antigen. But remember, for a particular type of antigen, they produce a particular type of antibody which will go against specifically that antigen and destroy that antigen or neutralize that antigen. That is the job of plasma cells. Now, this modification from plasma B cell to plasma cell contains several different stages, right? Inside and the training of B cell is called the training of B cell and clonal selection of B cell, clonal propagation of B cell. Once all those different things are done, this B cell start to be slightly larger and larger and a little bit longer also. So it is now filled with the cytoplasmic content of B cells start to go up and up because they need to produce a lot of proteins inside and they produce that inside. Now the B cell is now bigger and filled sacs. And this, if you look at here, it will look something like this. So it has a lot of this Y shaped armors, and that is called the antibody. But this is the example of the plasma cell. Now, once these plasma cells are produced, this plasma cell starts secreting the antibodies outside. Now, the important fact about these plasma cells, remember, here there is an antigen. Let's say this is an antigen 1 or and this is antigen A. Due to the exposure to antigen A, let's say here due to the signaling interferon gamma, they produces the antibody immunoglobulin G. And there are different subtypes of immunoglobulin G also, let's say immunoglobulin G3 in this case, for example. So they produce different varieties. Now, in this case, if we shift this antigen and it put another antigen, let's say antigen B now, in that case, a different antibody, different immunoglobulin will be produced. Right? So that's how it's very much specific and the affinity towards the antigen is specific because they are producing a lot and lot at the same time. Now the important fact, another thing that this system is called the humoral mode of immunity. And it, took, it is very much specific against that antigen, but it took a little bit more time to develop in the body. Because at the very beginning, when infection strikes in our body, the first stage is a cellular mode of immunity. Once cellular mode of immunity fails, then or not fails actually, once the cellular mode is kind of, uh, is after a particular time, they start doing this humoral mode mode. Now, if cellular mode is sufficient to uh, take away the condition, then it's fine. Now, here we, we see that one is a plasma cell, another paid for B cells are memory cells. Now, the memory cells are those B cells who designate this particular antigen as this is a stereotype A antigen. This has a particular signature molecular structure in it and they can actually memorize this condition. And those B cells remain as memory B cells. They're not enlarged, they're not producing any antibody, but they have a clear picture of what antigen is infecting. So in future, if that antigen is infecting us again, those memory cells will start producing antibody very, very fast, very rapidly. So that's why the memory cells are important, right? And these memory cells produce one type of antibody only, whichever antibody it is placed inside as a picture. But in case of plasma cell, the important factor is let's say this plasma cell is producing IgG3 antibody. Now, after some time, let's say this plasma cell 
encounters another kind of infection in body in that case let's say another variation of antigen in that case this plasma cell need to shift between the different type of antigen antibodies to cope up with the different varieties of antigen in body for that this plasma cell produces different variety so it can shift the different way of producing antibody and that is called as the somatic recombination technique and also called as the class switching so this is a class of antibody IgG there is IgA IgM different types or even different subtypes so this plasma cells can shift from producing IgG3 to IgG1 or IgGM so they can do that that's called the class shifting or class switching of the plasma cells that is possible but in case of memory cells that thing is not possible because memory cells are stored as a memory for that particular antigen only and they can produce a particular type of antibody only against that antigen if there is a new antigen those memory cells will not work properly so this in a sense is plasma cells and how plasma cell works okay and plasma cells are important because uh, they are producing all the time antibodies they're releasing the antibody and they're fighting against infections and due to them we are here and they produce a lot of antibodies and we use this technology to produce a lot of antibody directly in rabbit or mouse or goat so that's it guys if you like the video subscribe hit the like button share this video to your friends and social networking sites and put some comments in there thank you